Now, the Biden administration will end pandemic restrictions on the U.S.-Mexico border in May, and that's according to three U.S. officials. The restrictions implemented during the Trump era largely blocked migrants from entering the U.S. U.S. Customs and Border Protection status said that nearly 1.7 million migrants were sent back to Mexico. Critics say this action was never justified, but Homeland Security says that once the restrictions are lifted, then up to 18,000 people could try across could try to cross the border daily. Well, for more on the latest COVID developments in the U.S., let's bring in a rise correspondent, Dan Warren, who joins me live from Florida. Uh, good to see you, Dan. Uh, a new COVID-19 response plan by President Biden amidst concerns over funding challenges. Uh, talk to us about this. Well, um, it's it's a lot of money they're talking about over the next five years, $82 billion, uh, almost $82 billion to fund what they say is uh, basically uh, more variants of COVID-19. As, as you mentioned, the, the variant of Omicron, which itself uh, is a variant, um, uh, the BA2, uh, has now become the most dominant strain here in the US. Uh, many states now are beginning to uh, reduce measures in order to live with it. Uh, but the fact is there are certain uh, um, implications such as uh, vaccinating the vulnerable, uh, vaccinating for uh, potential other variants of it, and also being pandemic aware for other uh, viruses in the future. Now, the, the, uh, the Biden administration believes that the funding needs to be uh, made over the next five years, and eighty-two billion dollars uh, is is a is their their budget. Um, now, this is going to cause many problems for the Democrats internally because there are some that believe. This is not going to go down well with voters, uh, especially in states such as uh, Florida, which has always been seen as, um, uh, although traditionally a Republican state, normally if uh, uh, the uh, uh, president at the time, it's, um, not on this occasion, uh, Biden, obviously he was a Democrat, but Florida is generally um, uh, wh whoever is president, uh, that party gets the state of Florida. Uh, Florida, um, I, I've been here for the last uh, two days, and it's a completely different outlook to uh, COVID-19 than on the other coast, California, where I was uh, last week, where um, uh, California has is, is being seen as one of the first to learn to live with it through the federal government directive, whereas Florida, if I was speaking to, to a number of business people today who said that they've almost forgot there's been a pandemic because they've got rid of the um, uh, uh, various um, uh, restrictions so long ago and they've learned to live with it and their statistics aren't either better or worse than those states that have. So state by state, when suddenly people are going to have to cough up more money in their taxes, it's going to be a very big political um, uh, issue that uh, as, as we're heading into midterms in November, uh, it's certainly not good for, for uh, votes. And unfortunately, this is where we're getting now, where people's health is now going to be seen as whether it's a vote winner or not. Dan, uh, we're hearing about new plans to end uh, pandemic uh, border restrictions in May. Uh, what informed this decision? Yes, well, basically, the, uh, the, the, with, the, with the news of the Mexico border, again, this is going to cause many problems because since the restriction uh, has been in place that basically stopped people coming from Mexico uh, to the US to claim asylum because of problems or potential uh, issues with COVID-19, it stopped over 1.7 uh, million uh, people trying to claim asylum. So from uh, May uh, uh, or the, towards the end of May, people will be able to once again come to the border and and the problem is the border is a contentious issue already kamala harris the vice president it's her role uh, that uh, president biden has given her to to oversee and to uh, try and bring uh, strong uh, immigration uh, that's something that both sides want to see obviously the former president uh, donald trump he, he felt that a, a wall was necessary that biden obviously has stopped building the wall but kept some of Trump's policies, including uh, that of the uh, uh, restriction on the border. Um, but uh, it, it, they're trying to look like business is open. The US is now open. Um, but um, just judging by the early reaction that's been going out on the uh, uh, news channels over here during the evening, clearly not a popular one at this stage. 
Uh, Dan, uh, earlier we heard the former FDA co commissioner, uh, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, talking about uh, the possibility of uh, 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 vaccine shots being every year. And now a second booster shot's been approved just about six months after the first was approved. Uh, this looks like a trend that might be sustained over time. Uh, is the U.S. government not worried about a possible public fatigue? I think um, I think global governments are worried of, of fatigue because we've seen it in in other European countries as well, where there's gone from recommendation to we strongly advise now that anybody over a certain age or uh, immune uh, compromise uh, has to um, have uh, extra boosters or extra jabs. Um, and uh, I mean, I do remember at the time they were saying that this could end up being a yearly uh, procedure, just like uh, a lot of people have a yearly flu jab. Um, they are. We, we do know that the most of the um, successful vaccine companies, such as Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca, are consistently trying to update the formula so that one, it will be able to battle the the any new variants, but also that the effects will last longer because everyone assumed that after the original two vaccines that would be it and then obviously omicron came along so then came the third uh, which was the booster shot now we're seeing a fourth booster israel has even been talking about a fifth booster uh, that uh, basically um we, we, despite the fact that these vaccines are new uh, coronavirus uh, vaccines have been in development for years it's just that they suddenly had to uh, accelerate their their development in order to to have this global rollout so that we do know that they they are investing heavily into trying to have a vaccine that will last longer but whilst the, the virus is still in its infancy and is still uh, mutating uh, obviously with lesser strict um uh, side effects for those that have got vaccinated it's impossible that once they've got one formula it's almost outdated so i think the fact is that governments will try and ask people to be sympathetic and I think it's we've now gone past certainly in the US where they're trying to get new people that haven't been vaccinated at all to get vaccinated because it's quite clear now that those that do wish to follow the, the vaccine procedure uh, have done so. Um, and it's just a case of keeping those that have started their, their number of vaccines uh, to keep them topped up, because if you leave it too long, then uh, they lose that their uh, um, so that they lose their strength and, and basically have to start from uh, square one again. We'll wait to see how that pans out with people. Now, uh, President Biden presented a budget proposal earlier. I, I do know that the $5.8 trillion uh, in that budget for 2023 calls for more pandemic preparedness. How much is being invested in addressing the shortfalls in the management of COVID? Well, yeah, this is this is the uh, biggest uh, problem. In fact, I was watching a, a number of uh, press conferences earlier where, um, the, you know, the, the, the problem is the the country and and certainly the the current administration have got huge spending plans as as we've reported uh, everything from their uh, build back better bills uh, to, uh, to to improvements in infrastructure and suddenly uh, a considerable amount of, of money has also now gone to ukraine that uh, Republicans and some Democrats now are saying, hang, hold fire here. We can't just keep spending more billions and billions. And obviously, the the, the problem is that uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic was a global um, problem and has hit the world financially and will take many years uh, to recover. And on top of that, we're seeing the problems in Ukraine that you can't keep taxing people, especially when there is a cost of living crisis uh, across the globe because of uh, fuel and, and, and food problems. Uh, so therefore, they're saying like, OK, you know, maybe it's a case now of trying to debate which which of the Biden administration's um, ambitions can be shorten in order to add more money into budgets uh, for COVID preparedness because you know governments aren't quite keen to, to, to as much as we are seeing that uh, masks are being removed in lots of places um, that, uh, that the fact is there are still huge risks with COVID the pandemic is is not over and countries should be prepared like we've seen uh, uh, you know Hong Kong for example see that uh, um, surge in, in Omicron that it just proves that uh, a surge can occur and, and there are surges in Europe but it's just people aren't talking about it because they're talking about Ukraine and and uh, other uh, issues that are dominating the news uh, but the fact is governments need to be prepared the US want to be prepared but it's there's only so much money to go around at the moment. Arise correspondent Dan Warren thank you so much for giving us the latest on COVID in the US.